violent crime. I, um, I looked at a piece in Politico that concluded people go to see Christie because he tells them exactly what they want to hear about Trump. He's not persuading anybody who's not already convinced. I take it you have a different view. Yeah. How did those people get persuaded in the first place? I mean, look, Howie, you know, we're, we're going to have every pundit in the world out there giving their opinion from talking to three or four voters when they go to a state, you know, and then they think they're experts. Um, I've spoken to now thousands of voters in three months. And what I can tell you is that they want the truth. The American people are tired of being lied to. They're tired of being lied to by Joe Biden when he said the other day that he's reduced the deficit, when in fact he's going to double the deficit this year. They're tired of being lied to by Donald Trump when he says the election in 2020 was stolen. And that's all he wants to talk about going forward is that and the fact that he's out on bail in four different jurisdictions. I mean, let's face it, Howie, this is a guy who's going to be sitting in a courtroom for all of March and most of April defending himself for trying to interfere with the peaceful transfer of power rather than making the case against Joe Biden. Well, you said it would be disastrous for the Republican Party uh, right in the midst of the primaries. The first uh, federal trial of the former president is supposed to begin the day before Super Tuesday. But 60 percent of Republicans consistently say they don't buy these charges. They think it's bogus. They think it's partisan. They think it's weaponization of law enforcement. So are you misjudging the current state of the GOP? No, uh, I think the questions are wrong. You can believe that these charges um, are unfair. But there are two things. One, we have to deal with them. Whether you think they're unfair or not, they are going to impact independent voters and soft Democrats in the general election. Both sets of people we need to win a general election as Republicans. And Donald Trump cannot win those people while he's under indictment of four cases. But secondly, let's look at the conduct. This is a guy who stole classified documents from the White House hid them from his own lawyers, hid them from the government for 18 months. And on January 6th, he told those folks the election was stolen. That's a lie. He asked them to march up to Capitol Hill, said he would walk with them. But Howie, you and I both know that if Donald Trump has a risk of breaking a fingernail, he's not going to take that risk. He sat in his office for three hours and watched the people that he had lied to and sent up to Capitol Hill desecrate Capitol Hill. Now, I just think that's conduct that's beneath what we should expect from a president of the United States. And if you don't think that these charges and that conduct are going to be a major focus in the general election, if we nominate Donald Trump, you're kidding yourself and we're going to lose. And that's going to mean a huge government, even more out of control than it is today, with a feeble president of the United States being dictated to by the worst elements of his party. But did Trump defuse your strategy of going toe to toe with him by staying off the debate stage and saying, since he's got a big lead nationally in the national polls, uh, that he is not going to do any of the debates? Well, if he doesn't do any of the debates, Howie, you know, we're going to give him another chance. I'm sure he's not coming to the Reagan debate. We'll give him another chance in Alabama. But if he doesn't come there, then I'm going to follow him around the country. Wherever he goes, I'll go. And we'll wind up talking to each other one way or the other. And he Are knows you that's true. you going to change your travel schedule to go where Trump goes, just so I'm clear? You bet. 